Hello students! We started looking at polynomials in the most recent lesson, and we added and subtracted them. We're going to be moving on to multiplying polynomials and doing some other things with them, but before we get to that, we have to learn some rules of exponents, because polynomials have exponents and we need to know how to deal with them when we're doing some more complicated things. Today, we're going to learn three rules of exponents that we're then going to use to simplify different expressions. I'm not just going to give you these rules outright. I'm actually going to show you where they come from. So what we're going to do is we're going to, for each of these, we're going to look at an example. And I'm going to do some math with this example to show you what the rule is going to end up being. And then once we know the rule, we're going to look at another example. But with the second example, we're just going to use the rule as a shortcut. So let's take a look at three different examples. First, let's look at x to the third times x to the fourth. Now, this is an expression that can be simplified. We don't actually have to write it as two separate powers of x. Now, some of you may already know the rule, but for those students who don't, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by expanding this expression. We know that x cubed really means x times x times x. And we know that x to the fourth means x times x times x times x. So if we write this out as repeated multiplication, x cubed times x to the fourth is going to be x times x times x times x times x times x times x. And by expanding it, we can see that this is really just x to the seventh power because there are seven factors of x there. Now, how can we start with the numbers 3 and 4 and combine them to get 7? Well, we add them together. And the reason is we started off with 3 factors of x, and then we got 4 more factors of x to get 7. We can turn this into a rule. The rule says that if we're multiplying two powers of the same base, like a to the m times a to the n, we can combine them into one power by adding the exponents. So a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. Now, once we know this rule, we can use it to do other example problems. Let's look at x to the fifth times x to the one hundredth. Instead of writing out x times 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 x over and over again over a hundred times, we can simply add the exponents. We know that 5 plus 100 is 105, and so we get x to the 105th power. Knowing this rule allows us to get the answer much more quickly and easily than going through the painstaking process of expanding it out. Let's move on to another example that will show us another rule. Here, what I want to look at is 3x in parentheses to the fourth power. Now, when we raise something to the fourth power, we're multiplying it by itself four times. So this is 3x times 3x times 3x times 3x. And 3x is the same as 3 times x. So all of the operations here are multiplication. And we know that when we're multiplying a bunch of quantities, the order doesn't matter. So I'm going to use the commutative property to rewrite this as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times x times x times x times x. And now we have repeated multiplication, which we know we can write out as an exponent. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the 4th power. x times x times x times x is x to the 4th power. And what effectively has happened is that the original exponent of 4 was distributed to each of the factors inside the parentheses. So it becomes 3 to the 4th times x to the 4th.
Now there is one more step we can do in this problem. We can evaluate 3 to the 4th. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. So we do end up with 81x to the 4th. But the important rule here that we can see, the shortcut, is that we can distribute this exponent to each of the factors inside. And we can write that as a rule. If we have a, b in parentheses raised to the n power, we can distribute that exponent and get a to the nth times b to the nth. This is a second rule that we can use to deal with exponents. Let's look at an example here. Let's look at 5x in parentheses to the 100th power. If we distribute that exponent to each of the factors, that gives us 5 to the 100th power times x to the 100th power. And I'm going to leave the answer like this because if we try and type 5 to the 100th power into a calculator, you're either going to get an error because the number is so gigantically huge or you're going to get something in scientific notation that ends up looking like 7.8886091 times 10 to the 69th power. It is a gigantic number and even then it's only an approximation. So the best way is to just leave it as 5 to the 100th power. Whenever I give problems like these, either it's going to be a small enough number that you can evaluate, like 3 to the 4th, anyone can take 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or it's going to be something that's so ginormous it wouldn't make sense to try and evaluate it. And in that case, we just leave things in exponential form. All right, we have one more rule that we're going to learn. And to do that, I'm going to give you one more example. Let's take a look at x cubed in parentheses raised to the fourth power. Now, we know when we raise something to the fourth power, we're multiplying it by itself four times. So this is x cubed times x cubed times x cubed times x cubed. And then each of these x cubeds can be written as x times x times x. So we've got x times 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 x. I feel just a little bit bad for the person who's going through and making the closed captions here. Thank you for your service. Anyways, if we look at this, and we look at all of these x's being multiplied together, we can write this as x to the 12th power because there are 12 factors of x there. Now, how can we take 3 and 4 and combine them to get 12? We know that is multiplication. And we can see that here because we have three factors of x occurring four different times. So 3 times 4 gives us 12 factors of x. So the rule here says that if we have some power, some exponential expression a to the m, and that is raised to another power, in this case n, we can write it just as one exponent by multiplying them. This is a to the mn power. And once we have this rule, we can use it to do other examples, if we have x to the fifth power raised to the 100th power, we can use this rule and multiplying the exponents gives us 500, so this becomes x to the 500th power. These are three rules that we can use when we're dealing with exponential expressions to simplify them, either by taking a variable that's written twice and writing it only once, or by getting rid of grouping symbols. I want you to click on the link below and look at several of those example problems because it's easy to look at each of these examples individually, but once you've got several example problems and you have to determine which rule to use in which situation, it gets a little bit harder, and so you really want to get good practice there.